Thank you all for coming. My name is Jonah Kraut um, of the Nashville PTG, Chapter 372. Follow us on Instagram at nashptg372. Um, and I'm going to be talking about uh, my tuning at Bonnaroo this summer. I got a call from SIR looking for a tuner. And I, uh, even before I knew it was Herbie Hancock, I was um, more than happy to, to go out there. But um, Herbie Hancock plays a Fazioli, and so there was a lot of newness for me uh, doing this, and a lot of exciting things. Um, and I just want to basically report back about my experience, a little uh, few tips uh, if I had to do it again, and share some pictures I took. Um, so the first thing that happened was you have to get there. <clears throat> so Bonnaroo is in Manchester, which is an hour uh, southeast, and uh, I wanted to leave more than that time, and so I, I tried to leave half an hour early. Um, I just had a kid, so I ended up not leaving early. And then of course what happened is you see that like red line, there's an accident or something, and so I just spent the whole time freaking out. The whole time freaking out, just like, is this going to be going up or down? Like how, you know, this is like the first thing. Um, so leave extra time, as much extra time as you possibly can. Oh, I got to the event. Even just getting there, they moved the place where you get to get the press pass. So if anything can go wrong, it's going to go wrong. So just, um, and I knew that already. I didn't need to be like, uh, I, didn't, I didn't have to learn that through experience, but that ended up happening anyway. So anyway, I did get there in time. Um, the what happens is I don't know if anybody's been on a festival or been to Bonnaroo. It's huge. So you get to where you're supposed to go, and then you need a golf cart to come get you. My instructions were just start calling people on this list to come get you. And so I was already I knew I was pretty good on time by the time I parked, but I still was kind of anxious about getting to the actual spot in time. Um, which turned out to not be necessary anyway, but I didn't know that. So I just start calling people and very quickly you realize like this is just a free for all. Um, I don't know who I'm calling, I'm texting people, I'm like hey this is Joan of the Piano Tuner, like can you come get me? And you get some people and cell phone uh, reception is a little spotty so it's like I'm in this lot, the lot that I was supposed to go to, like no, there's no organization. Um, Bonnaroo itself just, they have stages that are called this stage and that stage and the other stage and that tent and this tent and like they do that on purpose but behind the scenes it's just as confusing so I had to like establish where I was going and like make sure that it was fine but anyway somebody came and picked me up um, I got to the spot where I was supposed to be on the side of the stage uh, in time, big sigh of relief uh, and they're not ready for me yet, so I just hang out. But it was great to watch. Um, just uh, the piano seemed to be kind of how they centered everything. They were they were gonna move all this. They're gonna strike it later, but this is how it's going to be for the night. Um, and I'm just looking at the fazioli. The it, the um, the cool thing about the fazioli was that there was a um, I think it was a, a piano technician's the Saturday thing that they do. I don't know if it was Ethan's class or somebody else had a class, but so everybody's been doing these classes um, sporadically, but there's a Saturday class, and that class was on Fazioli. So the day before I went, I just was able to get this like hour-long rundown about Fazioli's. Um, so I felt very prepared. Not that it would have been um, necessary, because you know we can all figure out pianos, but it was just a, gave me a little bit of extra confidence. Um, so just looking out at the crowd, um, nobody's there, and um, you see, I don't know, that this is eventually going to be filled with people. Um, and then just a lot of tech stuff. You kind of have to fi figure out who is running the show, and sometimes somebody will come up to you and introduce themselves, you figure out who they are. Um, you know, obviously you want to be nice to everybody, but there was just a big sort of, every time they had to move the piano, they had to get a bunch of people around it. And then doing anything on stage just required, the tech worked there, the people that worked there, um, you know, as, as kind of all over the place as everything was, it was still a professional, you know, thing. So 
everybody was doing what they were supposed to be doing. Um, just some of his equipment. This is just down, right, uh, I guess. Oh, this had a clear plastic thing on it. So what um, Herbie does, Herbie plays exclusively Fazioli's. And he buys one a year that he tours with. And then he just sells it at the end of the year. So um, I knew that, I, I don't know if I knew that then or if I kind of figured it out after. But like this, this is the clear plastic thing that hasn't come off yet. You know, and it probably won't come off. Um, but, uh, you know, as, as much as they want to preserve it and as careful as they are, I don't know if I, I found it. But walking around it, like, you can see little boo-boos where these things happen. So um, they're not going to get, you know, the full price, unfortunately. Of course, it gets played in a lot. And then we're getting to the thing that, um, that is the real ticket. So this is where they uh, stored it in between. Um, this is where I believe I first tuned it. I was, they, Herbie requests that you tune it twice. He requests that for everybody because he's figured out that one tuning is not stable. So he uh, insists that you, it, you do it twice and we spread it out. Um, I was able to get in there and do three times. Uh, I just volunteered to do it right before the set. But I'll explain sort of what happened there. But this is where it lived for, for the whole day. Um, I don't know if you can see the problem happening, the potential problem here, but we're coming to that later. I don't know if I have any pictures that represent that, but... Um, it was pretty hot outside. It was pretty hot, but that day was like the first relief. It was like the, yeah, it was cool the, 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 the days before that, this was on a Sunday, the days before that were just like excruciatingly mm -hmm. hot, and I was thinking about that, but the day of, for some reason, uh, was just fine. It was not, it was not bad. It was still hot, but um, just some of the inside. Uh, there's some cool stuff on Fazioli. Uh, I don't know if I, like, I captured any of it. Um, oh, you can see people starting to line up there. Um, this was for the first band. There were four bands that played before Herbie. None of them had anything to do with each other. Uh, and this is, this is just the, the festival circuit these days. They just put people together. Sometimes I'm sure they get along. Sometimes they have no idea who the, they are. I got to hear about these bands through the uh, production staff. Like I found out what kind of bands they were through hearing about if they were be complaining about them or not. Um, okay, uh, this is where we hung out just in between. Um, that's Herbie's uh, trailer that I ended up being in. He never even showed up. He was in his bus the whole time. I didn't get to talk to him. This is a map <laughs> of the whole thing. Um, and let's see, we are this tent. We were all the way on this side. Um, so it's an, I mean, I walked around here all day. Like, it's just huge. And then a lot of people go there for camping. I mean, it, it's, it's a whole thing. Um, just a little bit of, uh, you know, production stuff. Um, so this is in between here was when I first tuned and um, how do I say this? I didn't have any help from the band. They were doing their sound check while I was tuning and I, I did not, I mean this is like being very self-aware. Um, I did not even want to like look up because I didn't want to create any more tension than necessary, so I just kept my head down. At first I was gonna use like the, the sweetened tuning on my system, but very quickly I was like, this is gonna be a hard job. I'm gonna have to tune while the drummer is just like, it wasn't just a sound check, he was just like, here I am, like I'm playing drums and this, I'm on stage at Bonnaroo and I'm gonna do this, and I just had to like keep going. Um, so it was definitely the hardest tuning I think I've ever done. I mean, there's probably been times where I've been more under the gun. I was not, I, because I tuned it three times, I did not feel like I was ever under the gun. But in terms of concentration and also what I consider to be like the stakes, it was definitely the hardest tuning. Um, so that first one was, was the hardest uh, because I thought I could do this, I could take my time, but no, this, the, the drummer is sound checking, so I just had to tune the way that I would have told myself to tune, which is just keep going, you know, like 
<laughs> go do you'll come back to it later don't worry about the sweetener don't worry about like any of this just get it and that was so important for that first tuning because as I found out on the second and third tunings it just got better and better so it was already built into the schedule that I could do that but actually being there and tuning during that time was stressful and um, it's just you know if I ever see that band again I'm just gonna be like <laughs> you know, although I did hear from the production side of things that like they had a mishap with some tickets and they did it the right way. So the production people were like, "Oh, good job!" You know, like they're they're great. Uh, the other the other people was quite the opposite. They had all these requests before they went on stage, like five minutes before they went on stage. So that was that's a different story. Um, if you're an artist, you know that's 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 for another time to to talk about. It festival so how, how where was the piano like intention like when you did the first pass it was boy I don't it was maybe five to eight cents flat but it could have been sharp um, I can't remember now if it overall it was a, it was not consistent and you know it was typical for something that hadn't been like if, if I had just seen it in a house um, it would have been like yeah this this hasn't been tuned and Nine months or so. Mm -hmm. It just gets packed up, mm -hmm. put on a semi truck, and mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Just directs it. Yep. Um, uh, the bass was not far off because the tension's higher. The the places where you would expect it to be off were off. High treble was off. Um, but like I said, the second tuning I was like, oh, like this is gonna be fine. And the third tuning I was like, I'm just unisons here. So that that really like. The uh, progression of that was good. I made sure to be ready to go during the changeover. I talked to the guy who I just cleared it that I could just go on stage and get there. So I was sort of like um, trying to do as much as I could for myself, clearing it with other people. Where on the schedule were your tunings? So first one was uh, here. Somewhere between 11 and 11.45. So flip turn played at 12.45. And their line check, actually no, it was not. It was somewhere in between here. It was in the 12 o'clock thing. Because everything got pushed back. This was the, this was like the ideal thing. But I didn't, I don't think I, I think I was supposed to, I can't remember. When you I think your first tuning, what is that to you? Because like, if it was me on that piano, my first tuning would have been like, one time all the way through pretty quick. And then through again, like, well, that that's how that I would have been one tuning. Right. Okay. I mean, that's how I tune. That's basically how I tune anyway. And that's like uh, an hour for you. Well, it depends. Yeah. It depends how out of tune it is. To, it looks like it gets really tight. Yes. As it goes down. Yes. And that's why, like, yes. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes, but fifteen minutes is a long time to just be working on unison. On the last one. If yeah. you are confident in how to check a piano, mm -hmm. what to listen for. I, the only thing is, I did not get a chance to play the piano. I do not know how Fazioli sounds, really. I, it was just a piano to me. Um, I looked at the, the thing underneath. I don't know if I got a picture of it. Oh, this is just the inside. It's just very boring. They're beautiful um, pianos. Yes. I've never seen them. Okay. Here. Um, where is it? Uh, maybe I didn't get a picture of it in there. It's somewhere under there. Yeah, here it is. They provide a spare spring for the damper pedal. And even the guy who gave a presentation on Saturday, the Saturday before, did not know why. He did not have a, he was not, he worked on the Fazioli's, but he never like got anything from the company themselves. Oh. They never talked. So he wasn't sure if this was to provide an alternate tension on the damper pedal, or if it was just a spare part in case something happened. I think that piano gets moved so much, and in his case, they make they puppy put that on his piano. This is this tours. is on every this is on every Fazio. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, there's just little quirky things. The the the, the lovely thing about Fazioli was that it and from just looking at it, uh, listening to the presentation the day before, and then actually playing on it, it's like oh, it's it's just you know they they don't do anything fancy. There's no big like. This is what we do with the soundboard. It's just like everything is based on just the, the traditional piano. Really? I, I think probably oh, Steinway, like it's some yeah. sort of Steinway uh, uh, replica. A little, little nicer. But just everything is nice. Everything is super nice. How did it, 
if this is off topic, how did it seem in terms of like just regulation? Do you think he just plays through whatever it, as it goes through the year and goes down? He's just like, I'm going to ride it all the way down regulation wise. Um, I mean, you'd be surprised at how many great pianists do not know a thing about regulation. He just plays it to the ground. They just play it. I mean, <laughs> especially so uh, my, an old teacher of mine in, in Boston who has, it's like, he does these kind of moody noir, uh, noir uh, inspired piano things. Um, so he's playing a lot of chords and I mean, I, when I was there in Boston, you'd be amazed at how wrong it was. It was just wrong. I mean, it was, it was like, dun, dun. and I don't know, like at churches where, where people are playing chords a lot, you don't have to have it in great shape. You can get, if you're just playing chords, I mean, you do have to control pianos, of course, but um, there's a lot. The less you get away from single note stuff, the more you can kind of have your regulation be whatever, blah, blah, blah. Right. Nobody's going to notice. I'm not saying you can. I'm just saying right. it's, if, you, if it's not noticing, if nobody's noticing it, it it's not going to affect the player as much. Yeah, I, so. I was just interested because if it's getting moved around so much, obviously he's playing much more than chords. So. Um, I think I played a... Uh, a Bosendorfer once inside of a uh, hallway and the initial response that I got was just so much information that it, it occurred to me later when I went to, to check it that like the regulation was okay it was not maybe not the best I mean it wasn't very consistent um, but it didn't matter like you know it, a lot goes into that first just connection that you have and so much of that is just the design and the manufacturing. So uh, just a reminder that all these little things that we stress about are really at the top. I mean, that's really the upper the upper crust of, of what we're dealing with. Um, but you know, you could say that 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 makes it just as important as everything else. Um, so, okay, so um, yeah, this is this is a good shot. This was, I think, before. This might have been before the second. No, no, this is before the first set. And the reason I know is because people and dust is all out there. The dust. Walking around, I realized, so in between the second, uh, the second and third sets, I, I walked around a little bit. I think it was during this. And then I was like, oh, these weren't my shoes. It was, it was I had these other professional. Just wear sneakers when you go to a, a <laughs> festival. But um, I just noticed they were covered in dust, and so yeah, everybody's out there all day long. They're just oh, yeah. they're just walking around, and so it's like pig pen. I mean, it's just like it hadn't been raining either. No, like, no, dry. yeah, they had to um, they had to drive around. I should have realized that right away because when they were driving around, we were driving on the golf cart. We were like following somebody that's just like spraying down uh, the road because there's so many roads going back and forth. So that should have been a clue to me to. Cover the piano. Cover the piano. Close the lid. Close everything. If you've got a piece of plastic, cover the piano because there was just a layer now everywhere in there of all that dust. Just settled, just came in with all the people and is now in the piano. And they had to like wipe it down. I mean, I feel bad for whoever buys that because they have a layer of dust just from that one set. I closed it up after that. And oh, granted, some of the dust is going to get in. They I want everything. They're going to hurry piano. Don't worry. Really? Really? Like, like, I'm I'm <laughs> it's yeah. dusty. It's dirty it's in there. I mean, like, yeah, I would. I miss the fact where you're like, it's got a couple of nits and dirt, so they're probably not going to get full price. But Pancon plays on tour for a year. Every nick adds I don't care about the nick. I don't care about, I mean, to me, the dust is like, this was like a twelve dollar pizza. Just saying. So, <laughs> um, that's the, from the front. Uh, you know what it looks like from outside. People. Oh, the, I the mean, tents were literally named this, this tent. I do not lie. Oh, I thought you I, were like I can't no, remember the name. No, no. no, no. <laughs> this is. Yeah, if you look at if you go oh, back no. and look at this thing, you can see. Of the night. Oh, sure. Uh, it's too small. That you can see is this tent, this that the tent, lounge this merch. Tent. But oh, yeah, they, they're they're on there. I asked someone. I'm like, why do they do that? They're like, oh, no, this, is just what they, this is what they've done every year. I think they kind of like just everybody who's there for the first time. Never been. That's so funny though. Um, all right. So now I think they're what is this? They're moving it into position. Um, just another picture. 
more pictures. Did they, move, they so you tuned it all in a some spot, and that's where it sat until he played, or did they move it into? They moved it to this spot, and I was able to get in there and just check it. But I tell you this: the two times that I tuned it there, they could have moved it there; it would have been fine. And when I went back and checked, tuned it the third time, I was like, I feel good about this. You think part of that is also not as a great piano, but since it gets tuned every show, then it gets knocked out of whack, even though it sounds like it's been out of tune for nine years. It hasn't been sitting out no, of tune. No, I didn't tune. say nine years, nine months. Nine oh, months. nine months. It hasn't yeah, been yeah. sitting that way yeah. for that long. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, so uh, tension, overall tension change. Uh, you, got, you just have to equate to a tuning on those terms. Is the tension changing regularly? Is it not changing regularly? What's the reaction to the change? So if the piano is used to changing a little bit like that, then it's not going to react to that much. That's kind of how I see it. It doesn't necessarily play out that way. I think that's just you know a little bit of uh, intuition, um, instinct, just guessing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, it could have been on another day. It might have been out. I don't know. It might have been the weather was really stable, or just they moved it in a good way. I don't know. Like they they they, they didn't. You're, you're an awesome piano like, tuner. <laughs> Randy Potter was talking. Randy Potter was talking how he tuned a piano for. It was a rock concert. I don't remember the name of the band, but they gave him like 30 minutes or something like that, 45 minutes, and so he's rushing through it trying to get it all done. Then they come over with the forklift, pick it up, oh, no. and set it where it's supposed to be. Oh, well, that's wow. just like whatever. It's and then, yeah, and at that point he's like, <laughs> oh, it no. doesn't yeah. matter what I did. Oh, yeah. God. Well, we had that meeting. Uh, we had that meeting online where. Um, one of the one of our members, now what I can't remember his name. He's um, he's a touring technician. Um, what is his name? But he he had a nice, very nice presentation on Yanni and Paul McCartney, and I mean right now he's on tour with um, um, what's it? Pretzel Logic, Steely Dan, I think. Uh, his name will come to me in a second. But. Um, the dust. That's what I like. He never told me about the dust. Like, that's mm -hmm. the thing that I would definitely like. If you're gonna do something outside, watch out for the dust. Anyway, uh, at the end of the day, I was just kind of like hoping I would have a moment with Herbie or with um, um, what's his name, the uh, Terrence Blanchard, uh, who just had his opera premiere in the Met. Um, it would have been nice to just be like, I, you know. It, had they been hanging out earlier, it might have had an opportunity, but they just basically like waited until the last possible second to come in from their bus. And then they just went on stage, and I, that's just how musicians, they just like, they're hanging out, and now they're playing on stage, and then they're gone, they're going to do something else. Meanwhile, all the people in the crowd like have been there all day, they're all like sunburned, and you know. So it's, it, it all, it, it's, it's a special thing. Um, I thought that I had a video. Well, no sound, but you can hear it from the middle. Couldn't hear anything from where I was standing. <laughs> When I could just see this one through the space and then get to It's an 80? 80 something? I saw him at Jazz Fest like a few years ago or something. <laughs> 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 Switched around a lot. He played guitar a little bit, um, and yeah, I I would have stayed for the whole set, you know, but I had to go home. I, I had an hour. I had to drive an hour, so it was a. Um, I already kind of gave myself a little bit of extra time just to do that tuning before that, and kind of hoping something would <laughs> conversation would. But um, anyway, the, the first song was all I could kind of muster up. Then I sadly just kind of like. <laughs> 
had the guy drive me back to my car. <laughs> you heard enough pinging. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it really was like you can't couldn't hear. And also, like the other musicians who played, there was a bunch of musicians standing around. Like, that's just not a great place. You could you could have gone out in, in the front if you wanted if you wanted better sound, but still gonna be boomy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's festival. I guess it's kind of a weird thing, but. Um, you may have to do it someday. Were you tuning, um, so you tuned with the EQ, and then were you tuning the unisons by ear? Were you able to hear the unisons? Were the you crowd, could hear, uh, yeah, sure, you could hear the unisons. I mean, I think if I, my thing with unisons is I'll just do it until I run into a problem. If I feel like it's taking longer to do it by ear, I'll just. Like, because there's like a full crowd, it seems like it would have been like a white noise, like. Well, but if, with, I mean, I stand when I tune. I just put my head yeah, right in the hear. piano, mm -hmm. so um, I just I just do my tests, run it through, and find anything that's. Well, if your crazy. customers are like mine, you get practice with them running vacuum cleaners, TVs. Mm -hmm. Well, that's yeah, the thing. Blowers, uh, Sitting on the couch right next to the piano, talking the, on the phone. Yep. I tune for that one. This guy the other day had money uh, to do this. Gun smoke <laughs> on, and it was this scene. Oh, it was very dramatic, <laughs> and it was up here in this like. Fifth or sixth, fifth octave or something, and the scene was going on and on for like three or four minutes, and it was just a violin going mm -hmm. like this held note, like right, right here where I was. Well, um, just keep going. <laughs> it's a good point. It's a good point to to bring up because I know a lot of a, a lot of other technicians, um, maybe older technicians, maybe not, but um, they kind of get a little bit. Um, you know, salty when something's going on, and maybe they'll tell. I mean, I, if you're gonna if you're gonna request a quiet room, I would just say do it nicely. Yes. No lectures. Right. 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 But there is, I think, there is value in learning how to kind of just like hunker down and, and work uh, around with with what else is going around. Most you. important. It's actually. it's rare enough. I just <laughs> walk my way through it. Yeah. Most of the things that pop up, like. Probably only two, like two out of ten are I could even request to stop. If usually it's something that I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to stop anyways. Yeah. My control. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was waiting for this photo of you uh, at the end of that. Where is this You deleted that out of there. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you didn't go home. You wouldn't enjoy the festival. Yeah. Right. Well, for it. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I. That's not. That is not. I love music, but that is not for me. The festival is just. Um, it's way too intense. Um, anyway, that concludes our presentation. Um, thank you. Yeah. Oh, I had another question. You can, you you can still ask a question. You didn't John, do you want to put your? Uh, if people want to see. Well, just know. if you can, if you want to just upload it to us, you can. So John went to Ireland. So. I, I don't know if anyone wants to. This is not like piano related, so everybody wants to leave. <laughs> there was no piano, and you did not touch a piano. Oh, there are no pianos in Ireland. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> if there are, oh, you're like, in a pub. And you want to? Oh, conclude it. Give your info. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> just on with the National PTG. So we, this has been. You, you just. This is the conclusion of our uh, October meeting. This is the National PTG. Uh, please find us on social media, the Instagram, uh, NashPTG372, and um, stay in website. our website. We don't have a website. Okay. You can you can always look up the, the National Organization Piano Technicians Guild. That's the ptg.org. Uh, if you need a uh, piano technician in your local area, you can have a search button on the ptg.org site, um, and you might find one of us. But uh, thank you for coming.